William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. If you crave all the elbow room you can get, folks, be sure to have your coffin built to your own specifications. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. Live sharply with your senses in high gear as a confidential cop must. You notice things the average citizen never sees. Little situations that look normal on the surface, but aren't really. Like a loving couple on the subway, the Sea Beach Express, en route from Times Square to Coney Island. A cute redheaded girl with an ice cream look and a young fellow with an actor's profile. He had an adoring arm around her around her waist, inside her coat. Young lovers, peaches and honey. Only thing I could see the hard outline of a gun under the girl's coat. She was acting cozy, all right, by persuasion. Going through a tunnel, I changed seats to chaperone the situation. Nice day. Huh? You say something? I asked, uh, what do you think of the world situation? Hey, what are you, some kind of a nut? Isn't everybody? Look, creep, blow. My seat's paid for. Well, my ears aren't. Oh, no, that's an unneighborly attitude. What does your girlfriend think about it? Mind your business about my girl. I can't. You what? Chivalry. I've got the taint of the southern gentleman. I once spent a weekend in Chattanooga. I can't ever pass up a lady in distress. What uh, makes you think she's in any distress? Isn't anybody? With a gun in their ribs? Look, wise guy. A gun can point two ways and I'll bite your tongue. Can't do. I'm a lifelong vegetarian. You can get plugged. So can you. Even faster than me. Uh, what does that mean? Cast a downward glance, brother. My right hand in my right coat pocket. If I fired, now, uh, let's see. Yeah. You'd be shot in the seventh rib. Who, who are you? Sir Galahad. I've got a suggestion to make. What? The next station stop, we get off. The three of us. You, me, and the redhead. If not, we'll both be disappointed. On the subway platform, I took the obvious precaution. Your gun. Let's have it. Huh? Hand over your gun. Yeah, I guess you would want that. Only thing I'm not so sure I've I... got the drop on you. I know. First shot's yours, then my turn. You want it like that? Call me crazy. Tex, give him your gun. Tex, please. Looks like Angie's for you, mister. For you? She doesn't want you dead. Look, it's my life. You're not getting my gun. I'll have to lose it to you. Okay. You give me no choice. Don't, mister. Don't, please. Don't shoot Tex. No? He's stubborn, hard-bitten, crazy stubborn. That's his trouble. That's always been his trouble. You sound like it's been a long time with Tex. It's been a long time. I know him through and through. I see. So what's your line on the situation? Let him go. Just let him walk away. Take a walk, Tex. Sure. Sure, if you say so. I won't thank you, Angie. My hunch is Galahad. He is too yellow to shoot anyway. Go, Tex. While you can, go. Sure. Sure. I'll be looking you up again. We got uh, unfinished business, Angie. Now what, miss? Take me home. Home was a cheap hall bedroom, an old iron bed and a linoleum rug with designs of cherubs pointing bows and arrows on it. There was a blue waitress's uniform hanging on a clothes tree. I wait on tables, Renzi's chop house. No, I won't be able to. Tex, huh? He knows about my job. But doesn't know your home address? That's one secret I managed to keep. What are you two to each other? Sweethearts. We used to be. 
We grew up together on Elkin Street off Chatham Square. Rough neighborhood. A street killing once a month like clockwork. <laughs> we became engaged when Tex was 14 and I was 12. A ring he stole from his mother. Uh, you still love him? How can I? Yeah. He's a bad actor. What gives between you two now? I... I don't feel free to discuss it. Well, maybe you'd better. He left threatening, quote, uh, unfinished business. Also, I'd worry about his gun if I were you. I do worry, believe me. I'm up nights smoking and walking the floor. I'm a cop. Not the regular kind. Private. Confidential. I can handle a situation without being hemmed in by regulations. Meaning? I can be a friend. All right. I'll confide in you. For Texas' sake as well as mine. Tex came out of jail last week. First thing he did was look me up. Why? A sealed envelope left with me before he stood trial. Go on. Tex was convicted of robbing a payroll messenger, the Hubble Electrical Company. $30,000 was stolen cash. The court never got Tex to tell where the money was. Just took his lump, served five years. He stashed the money away. I... I don't know that. The sealed envelope left with you, it had to do with where Tex had the money. I'm sure you guessed that. Yeah, I guessed it. But I never opened the envelope. I I didn't want it on my conscience. I, I felt that I owed some loyalty to Tex for, for what we'd been to each other. I remembered good times we'd had. Times Tex acted civilized and normal. You uh, turned the envelope over to Tex last week. Then what? Well, Tex came back the next day. He couldn't find the money. It was gone. He... He accused you of a double crime. Yeah, imagine that I'd steamed open the envelope and then sealed it back. Where was the money supposed to be hidden? Well, Tex didn't say, and I don't know. Are you the only person Tex suspects? No. He also suspects his brother, Willie. Willie's his twin. Well, how does he connect Willie with the alleged double cross? Well, uh, while Tex was up, I'd been seeing Willie. Oh. Dates. I needed companionship. I couldn't sit around like a stick of wood. Well, Tex thinks Willie got to the envelope, that I was careless with it. Where did you keep the envelope? Oh, there, under the linoleum. Could Willie have kidded you along just to get at the envelope? I'd say no. Willie's sweet. The opposite of Tex, hardworking and honest. He drives a laundry truck, works like a dog to get somewhere, but... But? Oh, you never know who to trust. You never know who's rotten in his heart. Yeah. Any money to tide you over while you stay away from Renzi's chop house? I got four dollars. You've got 24 now. Why are you giving me money? No strings attached. What good's my helping you if I let you starve to death? For so long, I'll be in touch. Goodbye. And uh, thanks. <laughs> A few doors up from Angie's furnished room, the neighborhood got over-friendly. One resident constituted himself a committee of one to see to my comfort. A fellow with sideburns that ran into his neck. Hey, you feel something, Pop? You've got ten years on me, pal, so how can I be your Pop? Well, my gray head had an H. I do it on purpose. Why? So as I can look distinguished. Why? Why? Well, don't, don't everybody want to look distinguished? Hey, you're ribbing me. And you're ribbing me. <laughs> yeah. I asked you before, do you feel it? I feel it. Huh. Sharp, huh? Another sixteenth of an inch, you'll draw blood. I got that knife trained that does just what I say. Tell it to climb back in your pocket. Ah, the knife says for you to step into the alley. Which alley? Oh, pick any one you like. Okay, that one. Show it away. In the alley, I submitted to a frisky. Hold still. What prey are you looking for? Uh, a gat. How come, fella? Check my wallet and deduce for yourself. Oh. Private eye, huh? Worried? No, cops don't worry me. I worry them. A cop fighter. I was ten and one shot my old man for nothing. I never forgot. 
Shot your old man for nothing? All he was doing was a saloon stick-up, only for laughs. Only for laughs? Yeah. It was a Saturday night, nothing doing, everything dead. The old man wanted to liven things up. And then, boom, and I'm an orphan. Stupid cop. Sad story. Well, should I love cops? No, but don't hate me. I'm private. I work for me. <laughs> now work for me. What do you want? I seen you with Angie Palmer, showing her home. So? So the dough Angie held for Tex when he was sent up. Don't leave Nick out of it. You being Nick? Yeah. Me being the Nick that used to beat the ears off of Tex when we was kids, PS 142. 30 G's and hot money. I've been drooling over it. Who's got it, huh? I don't know. Angie or Tex, huh? I said I don't know. Or maybe you. All I've got is what's in my wallet. Ten bucks. My worldly goods. Here, take back your wallet. I'm after big stuff. Just like you're after, huh? Meaning? Oh, you're after Angie for my reasons. Maybe. You make out. Remember, don't leave Nick out of it. Your knife says. My knife says. That fence there, you see it? I see it. Climb over it and find yourself some other street. I don't want to be seen with you. I'm hard luck climbing fences. I tear my pants. Get. Texas twin brother, Willie, didn't exactly look the part of a hard-working stiff who drove a laundry truck. The suit on him was custom tailored. The shirt under it was pure silk. The ring on his finger had a rock in it the size of a rhinoceros egg. Prosperity all over him in neon lights. I haven't seen my brother Tex in five years. Trains stop at Ossining. Oh, Tex warned me never to visit him in Sing Sing. A feud between you? We're peas in a pod, only on the outside. Meaning? Tex has always given me a bad time, abuse, trouble. He resents my respectability. <laughs> Being twin to a bad man has its complications. Such as? I'd been arrested time and again for something Tex did in the years before he was sent up. Ladies have identified me as a purse snatcher, stuff like that. I'd stand sweating it out in police lineups. Angie, uh, why are you romancing Texas girl? The normal reasons. Love? Uh-huh. Head over heels since I was this high. But Angie's been Texas girl. Once. That's over. The guy your brother is, you're asking for a headache. I know. It scares me, but it scares me more to give up Angie. I see. I glean you've had more schooling than Tex. At night school, I take courses in speech and electronics. Pointing for trade? Radio TV repairman. I figure someday to open my own shop. Tell me, what's the twist in Tex? Well, he was a show-off as a kid. He got used to the wrong kind of applause. He'd pull all kinds of petty stuff just to get attention. He couldn't stand being ignored. It drove him crazy, made him feel like dirt. He's still a kid showing off. Oh, but don't take my analysis for it. I'm not a psychologist. I've got a rough question for you. I think I know it. Go ahead. Did I get close to Angie? Or just to nose out where Tex had the stolen $30,000? What's the answer? No. You have no idea where the loot is? No idea. Where can I find Tex? Have you any idea? Uh, it happens I do. In my own way, I keep a corner of my eye on him. Concerned for Tex and to protect myself. He's hot-headed and unpredictable. I never know. Well, where can I find him? 22 Tillery Street, a yard house behind the Corning Iron Works. Tex has always used it as a hideout. Thanks for the information. Uh, go, go easy on Tex, huh? He needs understanding. He needs a straight stare into his future. He's got a blind wall in front of him. I'm referring to the 30,000. The frame yard house behind the ironworks looked like a strong wind would blow it down. I found Tex in the room that had the smell of last year's rain. He was stripped to his waist, stretched out on an army cot. More in a coma than asleep, his eyeballs popping in a lunatic stare and sweating a hot paste of sweat. Sick, he couldn't be sick, and delirious, babbling in a delirium. A steak for Tex, Tex riding high. Blazing no good. 
30,000 beautiful, beautiful, beautiful old Dunstan's chicken farm. Walk a line from the coop. Easy. Oh, it's easy to do it. Blindfolded. Easy. Easy as pie. Easy. Pretty soon, I was playing nurse to a hoodlum, bathing his brow and cooling him down. And then his eyes were on me, blind to who I was, and suddenly calm as if the fever had passed. Oh, you. Yeah? The bottle. Oh. The shelf over the sink. Re uh, re reach me a pill, will you? Sure. Oh. Here, now, raise up a little. Oh. oh. Thanks. The pill brings me to... Fine. Oh, I must have passed out. You were delirious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fever. Fever. I, 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 I got it in the tropics once. I was a kid on a job in the tropics. Rubber plantation. I was hired out to a surveyor. Forty lousy bucks. The fever. It hits me and goes all, all the time. It, it hits me and it goes. Chronic, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chronic. The prison medic had me on shots. Uh, uh, you, you... One. Uh, 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 do me another thing, will you? Uh, uh, fry me a couple of eggs. My, oh, my stomach. It feels like an empty drum. Uh, how do you like your eggs? He downed four eggs and a pot of coffee before he bothered to figure out where he'd seen me before. His eyes began to focus like a veil had dropped. You're the creep who jumped me on a subway train. No hard feelings. What's your game? Good Samaritan. <laughs> the other time you were Galahad. I'm versatile. You're either a crook or a cop, which? Cop jerk. But you're prejudiced. I did five years. For armed robbery. The penalty fit the crime. Salvation talk. You can use some. Some what? Salvation talk. Cops hounding me, look, I paid my debt. Not quite. Not quite? The $30,000 still outstanding. You're still in debt. I earned that $30,000 five years. I lay in a hole for five years. You'll live in the shadows for the rest of your life if you try keeping that money. My risk. Besides, I haven't got it. Who has? Angie or my phony brother, Willie. Or Nick? Yeah. Oh, Nick, the rat Nick. He was up at Sing Sing visiting Sundays, handing me a carton of smokes and a line. Tip him to where the money was. He'd keep it safe for me. <laughs> safe in a pig's eye. Angie, Willie, or Nick. Anybody else you suspect could have beat you to the money? McAvoy, the insurance dick in the case. I swear he had a phony look to him. Or you. I wouldn't put it past you. Everybody's dishonest in your book, huh? Yeah, sure. The only honest sucker who ever lived was my father. Five bucks a day digging ditches until he fell dead into one. What killed him? The five bucks a day. He made five, he needed ten, period. Where did you have the money hidden? Sure, I'll tell you. Why not? <laughs> it's no secret now. There's a chicken farm up in Yonkers. Dunstan's chicken farm. Weekends, I candled eggs for old Dunstan, for eats and pocket money. I buried the dough so far from the big coop and so far from Dunstan's tool house. I made a map at a location. And gave the map in a sealed envelope to Angie. Angie blabbed here, huh? You searched up at Dunstan's farm? Yeah, I searched. Joke! You might have missed finding it. It could happen. Baloney, I dug up a half an acre of ground. Let's have another go at it, at Dunstan's. Another go? To really make sure it's gone. You and me, Hank. <laughs> Wouldn't I be crazy? We turn up the money, I won't lay a hand on it. It's yours. I'll let you decide for yourself. Decide what? Take off with it or give it back. Really clean the slate, Tex. We had four hours of digging in the evening quiet of Dunstan's chicken farm. What well, used to be Dunstan's chicken farm, that is. Dunstan was gone, and there was a for sale sign on the abandoned property. I give up. Oh, my sentiments, too. We've at least dug up an old shoe. 
Now, if we can find one to match it... I don't make with the jokes. The money's been snitched. I know it. Maybe old Dunstan himself. Don't sell me that. Or anybody. Some lucky stranger. Still no sale. It's Angie, my smart aleck brother, or Nick. Hey, somebody mentioned my name? Nick. Yeah, in person. Hiya, kid. Greetings. This disposes of one suspect, Tex. Yeah, how's that? Nick trailing around after us, letting us dig and watching us. Would he if he had the 30000 No. No, I guess not. Unless it's a smart cover-up. Yeah, don't beat your brains, Tex. I ain't got the loot yet. I was sure you two chumps was going to lead me to it tonight. May I offer my regrets? Save them. So it's Angie or Willie, huh? Nick, stay away from him. Says who? I'm warning you. Oh, <laughs> long time since I batted your ears, little man. Yeah. Yeah, I have taken my lumps from you. Sure, from kid days up. You've been my pigeon. Oh, Nick. What? Got your knife sharpened? Yeah, and pointing at both of you. I notice. But see what I've got. What? Hey, a gun. Cocked and ready. Drop your knife, Nick. Oh, sure, no argument. Dropped. Tex. Yeah? I've got a hunch about you. That you've taken a lot of guff from people right from the cradle. That it gave you, say, a, a complex. Made you try awfully hard to pass yourself off as a tough guy. Yeah, I... I've taken a lot of abuse from Nick here, right? He made me the joke of the block. All the time, the joke of the block. With his fists, fair and square, and the best man wins? <laughs> fists, my eye, with his knife. I got scars to show. Then go to it. Go to it? Here's your chance to lick Nick in a fair fight, man to man. Lick Nick and lick a few of your complexes. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I always wondered how I'd do it, Nick, fair and square. Let's get to it, Nick. Hey, wait a I'm minute. gonna beat your brains No, in. now, listen. Well, show oh. some fight, Nick. Oh. Listen, Tex. <laughs> With Nick demolished, we had T-bone steaks for ourselves in a lunch wagon. There was a new shine to Tex. Confidence, but of a different variety than before. Oh, I feel great. Great. I'm glad to hear. Oh, like a weight off me. Like Nick was the symbol of something that had me down. Always had me down. Well, in flattening Nick, you proved to yourself you could make out on the level with honest sweat and toil. Yeah. It flashed through me the exact words you say. I, I, I got stuff I don't have to put on. I can be me, me. Uh, but I'm forgetting something. What? The money. The money's going to pull me down, down low. Meaning? Somebody's enjoying it. But it's my rap. I'll get the short end of it from the cops, the insurance outfit. They'll, they'll never believe I lost the loot to somebody. I got to put the screws on Angie and Willie. Tex. Yeah. I'll make book that neither Angie or your brother have double-crossed you. Well, why wouldn't they? They're just not the criminal type. Ah, that's crazy. While you're learning things, also learn to have a little faith in people. <laughs> that's gonna come a little tough. Angie's a sweetheart, and your brother's solid gold. Yeah, nice words. Now, about the money. Who got it? I've been picking my brain. No, who hasn't? I've got an advantage. I'm a cop. Meaning you think better? 20 years as a trade gives a man a certain training. Yeah, well, you show me. Your room behind the ironworks, when I came across you earlier today, you were in a coma, delirious, babbling out loud. The fever. The fever. It comes and goes, you said. Yeah, yeah, it comes and goes. Now think. Did the fever get you in prison? Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, very bad once. Last year, that, that was, I, I, I was in a hospital for a week. A week of babbling out loud, like you babbled to me in that room. You know some of the words I caught from you while you were delirious? No, go ahead and tell me. Dunstan's chicken farm. Walk a line from the coop, blindfolded. Do it easy. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, babbling in, in my delirium, is that like uh, talking in my sleep? Talking things wild horses couldn't drag from you when you were conscious. The DA and a judge couldn't drag it from me. Neither could the warden. Where was the dough? I laughed in their faces. Now think hard, Tex, if you get my drift. I'm ahead of you. I know who we're after. 
I got his face in front of me. Who is he? Joey starts a short timer in Sing Sing. He was an orderly in a hospital. He couldn't do enough for me. With the alcohol and the sponge, with the medicine, every time I'd come to, there was Joey sitting in my bed. Smart Joey. He got an air full of your babble. Oh, yeah. I made him a present of 30 grand. Know where we can look him up? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I do know. Wind up a case, you don't always do it to the king's taste. Or should I say, the law's taste. We found Joey Stutz, all right. Living it up big in a Park Avenue duplex. Funny looking run of a guy in a Japanese kimono and gold stitch bedroom slippers. Joey had a surprise for us up his kimono sleeves. I wondered when you was gonna tumble to my little trick, Tex. Your ears open while I lay in a coma, rat. It, it took just four days for me to figure out what you were telling me. How to walk ten yards from a coop and, and then five more left at a tool house. Cough up the dough. I can't. Make it tough, Joey, so no, help no, no, me. No, 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 take it easy, Tex, take it easy. I, I, I'll give you what I got. Look, it, it, how much is there, huh? 82 cents. 30 G's, Joey. Oh, wait till I show you, Tex. Here, look, look, look. Cancel checks. Me? Eh? You total them up, I think you'll get 30 grand, just about. You, you went through 30 grand? Sure, in a year it was easy. <laughs> I, I, I had myself a ball. I had horses and, and, and dames and a fa fancy foreign sports job that I rented. Whoa. <laughs> Tex, it, it was like a dream come true. A dream? Yeah, for one year, but you're king of the world. You, money to burn, not a care in the world. Oh, Tex, come on, you had the same dream yourself, huh? huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the same dream myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sure had. <laughs> Climaxes happen like that. A fortune blown to the winds, and that was all there was to it. I consoled Tex. Craig... What's my situation now? Well, we get the truth on public record. I'd say you're in the clear yourself, blameless. Free to live the new man. Joey here has a debt to pay. I'm, I'm ready to do time. Because, brother, what I did was worth it. Yeah, you had more fun. 82 cents left out of $30,000. How did you manage to hold on to 82 cents, Joey? <laughs> I got a thrifty streak in me on my mother's side. <laughs> hey, 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 look, you're grinning, Shamus. Yeah. I'm thinking how I'm going to take you downtown as you are, in your silk kimono and gold slippers. Huh? <laughs> I want headquarters to see what the well-dressed crook is wearing nowadays. Shall we go, gentlemen? <laughs> You have a listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Tough Guy, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's a strange story of murder by error, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week's story, Murder by Error, a footloose husband stubs his morals and almost collapses into the electric chair when a hot pistol sends a cold chill through him. Good night, folks. See you next week. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, directed by Arthur Jacobson. Heard in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Shep Mencken, and Larry Dobkin. This is Eddie King speaking. NBC sends a welcome to WAPI Birmingham, its newest affiliate and Alabama's oldest radio station. This is the NBC Radio Network.